people of Salt Lake, your Salt Lake City Tacova store is officially open. If you are on the lookout for a great pair of boots or fine Western goods, stop by City Creek. Let the Tacova staff get you fitted for a comfortable, handcrafted, beautiful pair of Western boots that you will enjoy for years to come. Head over to City Creek, step into a new pair of Tacovas, and whatever you do, don't go gently. Here's what Salt Lake's talking about. Purple is back, the Delta Center is back, and we lost our first home game. It's the 50th anniversary of the Utah Jazz, and though it often brings heartache to our doorstep, we love this team. But we keep hearing one particular question about the Jazz's future, and that is whether or not that future is in downtown Salt Lake City. Lead producer Emily Means is hosting because I have been hunting for answers. It's Monday, October 30th. I'm Ali Vallarta, and this is CityCast Salt Lake. CityCast Salt Lake host Ali Vallarta, you and I both love the Utah Jazz, but you heard a terrible rumor recently, and you just had to investigate it. Where did we first hear that the Jazz might be leaving downtown? Listen, it's hard being a Jazz fan, and um, it got a little bit harder a few weeks ago when the executive editor of the Salt Lake Tribune, Lauren Gustus, asked our three mayoral candidates for Salt Lake City mayor what they would do to keep the Jazz in downtown Salt Lake City. And I think a lot of people heard that and were like, wait, what? <laughs> what? Yeah. I mean, e- even us, right? And it's it's kind of our job to know what's going on mm-hmm. in the city. And we were like, uh, that came out of nowhere. And I do want to say, like, the Jazz are not leaving downtown. We're not manifesting that. But everyone is asking the question. And I, I am kind of a simple gal. And I do believe that where there's smoke, there's fire. And so I have been asking around and it turns out that this rumor is a poorly kept secret. (laughs) Um, And you know what? Podcasts are for talking about stuff. And so here we are. Let's talk about what this could look like and why this is something that's even being speculated about. Well, Allie, why on earth would they even want to leave downtown? I barely even want to drive past Mill Creek. <laughs> like, what are the pros and cons of moving the jazz somewhere that's not the capital city? I mean, it really is hard to understand. I have spent the past week tossing this around in my head and trying to get inside the minds of the decision makers here. And and there really is only one, to be honest, and that is Ryan Smith, who is the co-founder of Qualtrics and the owner of the Utah Jazz. So there are a couple things that are happening here. First of all, Ryan Smith and Danny Ainge want a ring. They want to build a championship team. And them and me both. Right. I mean, look, come on, we'd love it, right? But <laughs> the thing is, There are a lot of things that need to go right to win a championship, okay? You need a golden boy player. You need culture in your locker room. You need the stars to align. You need good draft picks. You also do need quite a bit of money. And right now, the Utah Jazz, they make good money. They make more than us. They're making anywhere from 250 to $300 million a year in revenue, but they would like to make more money to help them meet their goals and build a championship team. Mm -hmm. So is there a sense that moving out of downtown somewhere that they can build basically like an empire, like they can run the block, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, Could that help them make more money? Possibly. How does more money lead to a championship team? Well, that's an interesting question because it kind of depends who you ask. Because If you ask some basketball fans, they'll say more money doesn't lead to a championship team. The Denver Nuggets make about the same as us, and they won the championship last year, right? But then you look at the Golden State Warriors, which are an absolute, I mean, basically an empire. They make like $700 million a year. They're also in San Francisco, Uh right? I mean, again, there's a lot of apples to oranges comparing happening here. And that is 
kind of fundamental to speculating about sports in the first place, right? Is that it's everyone's just kind of throwing stuff at the wall to see what sticks. Okay. The other thing that we do know is that, and this is according to reporting from KSL Sports, Ryan Smith is interested in the NHL and the NHL is interested in Ryan Smith. We know that he had dinner with NHL commissioner Gary Bettman in March. He's interested in major league hockey. Now, How far are we in the process of potentially getting an an NHL team? I would argue we're not even in the process, right? There's been speculation about, like, could we acquire the Coyotes in Arizona? Uh, Could Salt Lake getting the Olympics be a little bit of kismet for Ryan Smith? And could there be suddenly resources for a new arena, which could include Mm. a hockey rink, if we get the 2030 or 24 Winter Olympics? The thing that's interesting about it to me that you hear people talk about a lot is like, okay, if you're Ryan Smith and you've got the Delta Center, formerly Vivint Arena, they play hockey friendlies there all the time. Like we host preseason games. And but Salt Lake Tribune Jazz Beat reporter Andy Larson looked into whether or not Vivint could be a good hockey arena as it is. And the answer is like kind of maybe not, honestly. Like there are sightline issues. Apparently there are lighting issues. Like hockey enthusiasts say it's too dark in there. Like the way that it's lit for basketball really? games. Like I guess the joke on Twitter was like you can't see the puck. <laughs> oh, no, that sounds dangerous. But the other big thing is that when you install a rink, capacity shrinks. You lose seats. So, okay. So if Ryan Smith is dreaming up a hockey team, then does he have to dream that dream somewhere else? One of the things that I think is interesting about this is that in talking through this with like friends and neighbors, as we all do, right? When we hear a terrible rumor, we turn to the people next to us and are like, oh my God, what could this mean? And so I asked a friend, I was like, okay, if they built a new jazz arena, somewhere else in this county would it be bigger and could we get like stadium Mm -hmm. tours right like because we don't get taylor swift we don't get beyonce in utah rice eccles which can seat about fifty one thousand people is dry no one wants to go to a dry concert Mm -hmm. i mean you can sell the heck out of garth brooks up there but you're not gonna sell beyonce (laughs) wait but we are getting bad bunny bad bunny is coming to the delta center Bad Bunny just doesn't compare to Beyonce. Is that what you're saying? I'm sorry, but Bad Bunny is entering his flop era. (laughs) And that's the truth. (laughs) But the the reality (laughs) is you don't build basketball arenas the size of football stadiums. Like if we got a different jazz arena in, say, the south part of the valley, it would be the Delta Center version 2.0. So to be clear, Allie, what you're saying is... They are looking for a facility that can support both the Jazz and a potential future professional hockey team. Maybe. They maybe are. Okay. Where could you possibly put something like this? (laughs) Well, listen, if you look at this valley, here's where development is happening. It's happening in the south part of the valley, right? Harriman, Bluffdale, Point of the Mountain. Like that is where there is land. That is where developers have a keen eye. And that is where you can be wheeling and dealing if you are a billionaire to secure land, right? To secure green space. Sure. The other thing about this idea of the jazz leaving downtown is that we have to take into consideration how demographics are shifting in our state, right? Okay. So Mm -hmm. if you want to draw as many people as possible to a game, which I think is actually kind of easy to do in Utah because jazz fans are famously loyal. Right. We've been around a long time. I don't know that we always fill the Delta Center, but like there is some good enthusiasm among these fans. No, we have had top 10. We have been in the top 10 teams for attendance in past years. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So actually, we are tremendously loyal. But... In the Valley, Salt Lake City, we always talk about the fact that Salt Lake City is growing. And that's true. But the south part of the Valley is where we're seeing a lot of development and a lot of sprawl and a lot of population growth as well, right? But what's really growing is Utah County. So if you're looking to grow an audience, you want to be kind of between your population centers. And that would kind of be between Salt Lake County and Utah County, right? So that is kind of point of the mountain. Okay. The thing about that is it's not very cool, (laughs) right? Really? And I mean, for me, it's quite far. 
I mean, I don't want to drive, what is it, 30 plus minutes on I-15 to go to a jazz game. And that's just me. I know. I'm very privileged and spoiled living in downtown Salt Lake. But yeah, I mean, 1.3 million people live in Salt Lake County alone. Around 200,000 people live in Salt Lake City proper. So we also have to acknowledge that a lot of people commute to jazz games, right? It actually might be more convenient for some people if this arena was somewhere else. But going into the city for a sporting event, I mean, that's culture. You know what I mean? Like, that's like, that is sort of a great American experience. And the other thing is that, you know, Utah loves to buck national trends. But nationally, stadiums are moving back downtown, right? Cities that have, or franchise owners that have moved their teams out of downtown centers are kind of regretting it. And they are moving their teams Hmm. back into downtowns. So it would be kind of strange for the Jazz to go the opposite way. The other thing that I've been thinking about a lot that I think is kind of upsetting to me when we think about, again, the possibility that this team is exploring a move is, do you remember when Donovan Mitchell left Utah? And you and I I both mourned because he was one of the best players we've ever had. And also just it was awesome having him here. Yeah, just a nice guy. guy. And there is something kind of incredible about the Jazz Stadium being so proximal to the Capitol. And and when, you know, Donovan Mitchell was kind of going toe to toe with members of the legislature, that they were so proximal to each other, like physically. You know what I mean? Like just down the street. Mm -hmm. And... When Donovan Mitchell left, he gave this interview with Andscape online magazine, and he talked about how draining it was to be a black man playing in Utah and living in Utah and in Salt Lake City. And one of the things he pointed to specifically was how draining it was to play home game after home game and look into the stands and not see black and brown faces, not feel reflected in the crowd. And... That is not going to be improved in Draper. Hey, Salt Lake. If you've ever wondered if you can pull off cowboy boots, you should pull on a pair of Tacovas this fall. With a new store open right here in Salt Lake City, it's never been easier to get fitted into a great pair of boots, and you'll enjoy them for years to come. Let me tell you how Tacovas are made. Each pair of boots is crafted by hand in over 200 individual steps. They use premium bovine and exotic hides, and they're designed not just for style, but for comfort. Step into Tacova's City Creek store and you'll be greeted with a friendly smile and the rich aroma of fine leather. The Salt Lake store offers complimentary boot shines and custom leather stamping to make your new boots future heirlooms that can be passed down for generations. Head over to City Creek, step into a new pair of Tacovas, and don't go gently. Hey Salt Lake, it's Allie. I think we have a great beer scene here. One of our OGs, Epic Brewing, has even recently closed their Colorado location to dig deep on all things Salt Lake City. So I'm hyped to let you know that Epic Brewing has a new beverage in town, and it is a canned cocktail, folks, the Utah Mule. Like any Moscow Mule, it's made with real ginger and lime, but they create the alcohol by fermenting cane sugar instead of using vodka which means you can buy it at the grocery store. If you are not a fan of ginger, no problem. Try their hard coconut water, which they make with sea salt. Delicious. Skip the line at the liquor store either way and pick up a six pack of Epic Brewing's Utah Mule or hard coconut water at any Harmon's grocery. Or you can visit them in person at 825 South State Street, where they are open seven days a week. Salt Lake parents, grandparents, and cool aunts, have you heard of the McGillis School? They serve kindergarten through eighth grade on their urban campus near 9th and 9th and are now accepting applications for new students. 
They've also got a learning center, which is a school within a school for students with dyslexia, dysgraphia, and dyscalculia. The McGillis School's mission is to empower children with a love of learning and the ability to think critically, live ethically, and appreciate the value of each individual, which seems like pretty good stuff. You can learn more about McGillis at an upcoming open house, either Wednesday, November 8th, or Thursday, January 11th. Both are from 9 to 10.30 a.m. Or schedule a private tour. Visit mcgillisschool.org and find the admissions link in the main menu. I mean, Emily, the thing that's like funny about this conversation about you know, again, the possibility that the Jazz are exploring the possibility of leaving downtown Salt Lake City is that everyone's talking about it and no one wants to talk about it. Mm. <laughs> An open no secret. No one wants to get on the record. No one wants to talk about this. And yet there are rumblings for a reason. But it was asked at not one, but two Salt Lake City mayoral debates now, both of which you attended. I did not. So what does the Salt Lake City mayor have to say? Okay. Well, I mean, both times I was like, holy moly, is this thing really happening? We're actually spending airtime asking the Salt Lake City mayoral candidates about this thing. And Salt Lake City Mayor Aaron Mendenhall basically says the city is trying desperately to create a full experience for folks uh, when they go to a sporting Mm. event. So she says it's no longer the case that people just show up, park their car, walk to their seat and then Hmm. leave the game. No, they want to do dinner beforehand. They want to go out to a bar afterwards. You know, they want to have a full city experience when they go to a sporting event, whether that's basketball, whether that's hockey sometime down the line or even Major League Baseball, as we've heard uh, rumblings of bringing a a Major League team to Salt Mm -hmm. Lake City as well. So that's kind of where Aaron's coming from around this issue. But Allie, the second time this came up, Hmm. at a debate. She was a little bit more specific, uh, especially about location. So the moderator for this debate specifically asked about Draper. Hmm. And, you know, you and I are kind of like conjecturing, where could this where could this new arena right. go? Where could the jazz possibly mm-hmm. move? And <laughs> Mayor Mendenhall said, Point of the Mountain has nothing on us. Like, she specifically named ah. Point of the Mountain. She was like, all Draper has is an empty field. Salt Lake City has it all. And so we should really be thinking about building a sports entertainment district here in the capital city. Now, that's hard because, as we've said, Salt Lake City is pretty built out already, right? Like, not a ton of land for us to play with. She also said it would take some uh, some legislative changes to uh, to fully mm-hmm. flesh this out. I think it was really funny. She mentioned uh, it would take legislative changes to allow you to buy a margarita at the Cafe Rio outside and then walk into the game with it. OK, that is very specific. Yeah, I know. It's like that's I, that's people's idea of a good time, I guess. Yeah. It's funny to hear you say that there is the possibility of Utah getting an MLB and Major League Baseball team because I feel like that is like almost certain. Like I feel it in my bones. I mean, we're hearing ESPN commentators start to say that Utah seems like the most likely contender. Of course, if you're not familiar with this, there is this. A coalition called Big League Utah, which is headed up by Gil Miller, former owner of the Utah Jazz, and actually. Utah Jazz owners Ryan and Ashley Smith are also members of this coalition. And they have laid out this case because Major League Baseball is ready for an expansion. They're looking for two cities to expand to. And it's looking likely that they're going to be us and Nashville. And um, if we got a Major League Baseball team, that stadium would be just like, what, a couple of miles from where the Delta Center is right right now downtown. And there is this interesting question of, like, does Salt Lake have the capacity, the resources, the fans to support two major league teams? Like, can we fill those stadiums? Now, 
What the do you question think? of can we fill a stadium, I feel like, has been coming up a lot this year with the that the bees are leaving us for daybreak for the suburbs. I mean, I was just last night watching the U.S. women's national team in Sandy at formerly Rio Tinto, now America First Arena. And there were a lot of people there. I mean, let's never forget that that stadium was also supposed to be on the west side, but then ended up in Sandy, right? In the suburbs. And so I actually reached out to Big League Utah because I was like, hey, I'm curious. Do you guys think that this is an arms race for, for downtown? Like to be the team that owns the downtown landscape? Like, do we have, can we support both of these teams. And the response I got was basically, well, we're very confident, um, but we're wrapping up our economic feasibility study is what Big League Utah said. And we're going to learn more about Utah's market and Major League Baseball once we have the results of that study. So we're trying to figure it out. But I mean, you and I both know, Emily, there's only one person who this decision sits with, and that is Ryan Smith. But it's not... (laughs) He's not the only person it impacts, right? That's right. (laughs) No. Like, there are a lot of stakeholders here. And, um, I mean, we've got city and county government. Uh, We've got our local business districts who will be impacted by this. And that's what I want to ask you about, Allie, is let's say the Jazz Mm -hmm. do leave. It could very Mm -hmm. well happen. I mean, like you said, the Salt Lake Bees moved on to the suburbs. What kind of impact would it have on our downtown economy to lose this NBA team? I mean, there was a story in KSL just last week called the start of a new jazz season means increased revenue downtown, right? Timely. It's almost like it's almost as if everyone's going wink, 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 wink. (laughs) Can we just put it all out there on the table, please? Honestly, I'm holding a forum. I'll be downtown at 3 p.m. today. Come down if you want to talk this through. Listen, (laughs) our downtown economy is driven by visitation. We need people to come downtown. We can't just rely on residents of downtown Salt Lake City. Now, the Downtown Alliance, which is a coalition that kind of like represents all of the downtown business owners, and I think has a vested interest in representing downtown residents too, they are always looking at the success of downtown, which I mean, let's not forget, Vox was just here because our downtown has Uh bounced back from the pandemic basically better than any other downtown in the nation, okay? So we're doing something right down there. The Downtown Alliance measures success in what they call customer days. And a customer day is when someone spends more than 90 minutes downtown, whether they're a resident or a, like, of Salt Lake City or a visitor or a tourist or whatever. They looked for last year at our top 25 highest visitation days downtown and found that three quarters of them were events at the Delta Center. Not necessarily jazz games, could also be concerts. But I mean, that really says something about the impact of that arena on our downtown economy. The Utah Sports Commission did a study a few years ago and they found that each jazz home game is equal to about $1 million in revenue for local businesses. Each game, that seems like a huge impact to local businesses' bottom line. Yeah, a million dollars is a lot of money. But I think the thing that is kind of heartbreaking about knowing that there's one person that can make a decision that is that deeply impactful, right? Like when we think about heavy is the head that wears the crown, right? Like the fact that Ryan Smith could just pick this team up and move it and absolutely rock, not just our city and our local economy, but also a community, just as the Millers did in Ballpark, is this idea that billionaires giveth and billionaires taketh away, right? And yeah, I get why Ryan doesn't want to talk about this. If you're negotiating, why show your hand? And we did ask we did ask for a comment and we didn't receive anything back. We got nothing. But it's hard to try and get inside his head. And I think he is someone who we've seen he likes to remind us that he is in charge and that things the buck stops with him and that things start and finish with him, right? He likes to flex his muscles. Never forget when he outshot Dwayne Wade at the Celeb All-Star Game in the three-point contest that they had. I think about it a lot because I do feel like 
Like, you know he practiced, right? So that he could outshoot Dwayne yep. Wade. Like, he couldn't let Dwayne Wade just have it, right? And it's like, that's a person who wants to be winning, who wants to be seen as a winner and to be seen as being in charge and in control. At the same time, he loves this state. I think Ryan Smith has more faith in Utah and more faith in Utah suburbs than I do. And he wants people to think Utah is cool. Like, that is his thing, right? And I don't know. What could be less cool than going to a sports game not downtown in the heart of the city? It's weird. Highlighter yellow jerseys, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, Helvetica font. Okay, Allie, before you go, I want to know, what would it take for us to keep the jazz here in downtown Salt Lake City? Well, Here's what we know. As you said, Mara and Mendenhall mentioned an entertainment district in one of her answers about this during a mayoral debate. I asked Dee Brewer, the executive director of the Downtown Alliance, and I asked him, can the Jazz meet their revenue goals in downtown Salt Lake City? Like, can downtown Salt Lake City provide what's needed to incentivize this team to stay? And here's what he said. The Downtown Alliance and city leaders were just in Milwaukee looking at the Deer District, which is a model for where you have the NBA team as an anchor in an entertainment district surrounded by restaurants and hotels and meeting places uh, where the team, where the Milwaukee Bucks have a financial interest in those investments. So that's a great example of another mid-sized market that has increased their revenue platform with this entertainment district and, interestingly, won the title a few years ago on that platform. We were in Milwaukee with 80 leaders from Salt Lake City. So that included Mayor Mendenhall, council members, Jim Olson, the president of the Jazz, was there and was part of a conversation with a leader from the Milwaukee Bucks. And we had a great discussion about what the Bucks had built there, how they built it, how they financed it, and what it has meant to the community. So I don't know, Emily. I mean, I feel like that all sounds very exciting. The Deer District cost $524 million. Can we afford it? And do we have the liquor laws to support an entertainment district like that? These are all questions that I think hopefully we'll be getting answers to soon enough. Well, Allie, I guess we'll find out. Hopefully we'll find out. It could be 2040, but <laughs> maybe one day. <laughs> Allie Vallarta, thank you so much for looking into this for us. I am worried, but uh, I feel better now that we've talked it through. <laughs> Same. That is all for us today on CityCast Salt Lake. We will be back tomorrow morning with more from around this city. Bye.